here in the third game of this series, the game that will decide which one of these two teams will play in the arena uh, in two days' time. There you go. They will have a day rest regardless, but uh, they need to win this game. And so far, both teams taking one series off each other. Let's find out what's going to happen in the third game. And don't worry, everything is back the way it should be. Everybody's back where they belong. God is not too happy about this, but uh, it <laughs> had to be done. Yeah, it was fun to cast. Me and Black would make a good pair. Yeah. I think everyone loved it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nothing wrong. I, I think we already are confirmed for the TI Grand Final, if I heard correctly. Gabe literally just called me and said it. Oh, he did? Yeah. Yeah. One cast at a major. Gonna get a big visa headed. to be at a TI, though. Right? Oh, they just switch <laughs> it out. Okay. I asked him to do it in Sweden. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Or oh, he, he just does it from He's home like, and I'm at the event. <laughs> we'll move TI to Sweden just for the cast. Yeah. 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 Grand Final, Easy. especially there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, DNC VG Gaming, uh, we've seen both teams win. I would like to hear from you guys what you think is going to change for this uh, third game. I definitely don't think there's going to be another experimental draft like VG Gaming had in that second game. Uh, Lifestealer has not been picked up this entire event apart from that game for a reason, I think, Gods. Yeah, here's not too hot right now. <laughs> no. um, not much else to say about it, I don't know. You're the carry player, Black. Any more life stealer? It is not good. Not like it, it felt like they had like this one chance. They lose this one team fight, and already from that point on, the game is completely out of reach, in my opinion. Right. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. And then the last pick they had with it, a necro fast. That seemed uh, odd. I thought they were gonna get like more of a playmaker type hero. Yeah, me too. Like okay. if you have a life steal, you want the storm. You want a Something like that. Yeah, I think, yeah, Storm, another Ember game even, like yeah. whatever it may be. Yeah, we thought maybe they want to set the pace high yep. so that they can uh, outpace that Spectre. That was second pick. Didn't happen, Bulldog. Yeah, I think we're probably going to get some more normal picks now. I don't know if you want to, uh, at least from Vici, I think they're not going to go anything weird. Just pick uh, what they what they like to play. Pick up Maybe pick up Melina or something. Mm -hmm. Probably going to see Arc Warden banned first too, and there, there it is, which makes sense. Like, they're going to pick it otherwise. For sure. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think, think that's going to be a trend. I feel like TNC overalls looked a bit better this series. Like, yeah. I think game one, even when, when they're lost, they played pretty well, other than like maybe Cuckoo getting caught out a bit. But their draft was just like too high risk. Like they had to hit this timing, they missed. But I think throughout the, the two games so far, TNC's looked like the better team. Yeah, for the, I feel like they've been growing throughout this entire tournament. Like in the yeah. beginning, you you were casting those games or watching? I've watched some of them. Yeah, yeah. And, and they were like throwing, but now yeah, yeah. they're much cleaner. And honestly, they're looking really good. But you can say the same about the draft, like in game two, right? Like VG went with this like really high risk draft and it didn't work yeah. out for them at all either. It just feels like in these tournaments, you should pick drafts that are allowed to make mistakes. You know, if you lose because of one or two mistakes, it's it, it's not a bad draft. It's just a very hard draft. And and in these high stake matches, mistakes will always happen. It's hard because once that arc warden came out in game one, for example, it's like you're forced into playing a hard hard draft, I guess. Or I mean, in that game, you weren't really if you're VG. You chose to pick the life stealer. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, ease of execution for sure comes into play. Weaver, Centaur, X, and oh. Phoenix still in the pool, by the way, and only one ban left remaining. This time Enigma is banned. Last game it was not. Yeah, it was ignored. Didn't care about Last it. game was ignored. Why would you ban Enigma then? What here does Enigma counter? It's because um, BG have the first pick so they can, you know, do that second pick Enigma and then ban the counters maybe. No, no, VG has second pick. Yeah. Second pick. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I know. I see what you mean. Oh, no, then. Yeah, okay, so Vici for this time taking last last pick, yeah. second pick. Okay. Why, why was it ignored last year's anyway? I was pretty surprised by that. That Enigma was ignored? Yeah. I thought it was going to get picked up, but neither team cared for it. I've seen a lot of bad Enigmas. Yeah, I mean... Or maybe just one that was really bad and it makes it feel like we've seen a lot of bad Enigmas. <laughs> we've seen a Rubik that was a great uh, wannabe Enigma. That's what we spoke about, right? Like Enigma, if you force it on a player that is not very comfortable with it, just because it's a good hero, it's not going to go so well. And especially in uh, like the last game now coming up. Yeah, you know it's a lot of so you shouldn't ban right it, right? Now. So you, you might should, you should force them to pick yeah, it. Yeah, let it now. them pick it, and they're gonna yeah. choke because they're gonna be so much on the on the line. Because if you lose now, you're out. Yeah, out. You're out. And I feel like yeah. any of these teams, they're probably gonna play Nip next, which means that they they can go pretty far here. I feel. What? 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 Well, probably. I said probably. Sheila. All right. Not because Nip's bad, because Nip's playing with stand. Yeah. So, so. Ah. A pretty bad standing. Right. And yeah, Nip terrible. is, of terrible. course, playing against Virtus Pro and implying that the winner of this is playing Nip means that you're implying that Nip is going to lose against Virtus Pro. Yeah. For people unfamiliar with the DPD never beats no one. True. Never happens. Yeah, this yeah, is I'll actually think. definitely a reoccurring <laughs> theme. Optic versus VP <laughs> lost so many games last season. Oh, the, the struggle was so real. Another 
Phoenix. I think the one thing I'm worried about the Phoenix first pick, I don't think it's a bad pick, but Vici Gaming, I think, have learned. Like, game one, they had ways to kill it. Game two, they didn't. This game, I'm sure they're going to go back to picking some of those range heroes that just kill eggs. Yeah. And you just pick Silencer as well. I mean, they had like a Life Stealer, who was like okay, but not great. I don't, I don't think that was enough, really. Yeah. X first pick again. He had a huge, like, huge? farm lead yesterday. I mean, yesterday. In the last game. <laughs> but. He didn't convert it at all. Like a minute 11 blink and he did nothing with it. Yeah, I think we've seen that a lot, honestly. Where Axe just has a great early game and then they mm. can't really find anything. Kind of was a huge mistake in some ways. Huge mistake. Huge. Yeah. Morph, okay. Oh. They're just going back to like, let's get a strong... Hard carry. Axe Morph. More, right? Mm. Ah. With ten... Oh, no, Terrible is banned. So... Potentially your Phantom Lancer is left. Yeah, they may want to just pick a carry now since you don't have last pick. Hmm. You can just pick the peeler if you want. Yeah. It's, it's oh. not bad against either of those. So. And if you're going to reveal your carry early anyway, which seems to be the trend with this series, might as well. Oh. Yeah. They go like for it. Shaman instead. Yeah, I okay. like it as well. A lot, good. Yeah, a lot yeah. of pressure against the morph. Take, okay. Takes away morph's ability to just freely play the game. Yeah, yeah. It's good. Okay. Might, might be an what did you think about the support combo last game, the Phoenix Shadow Shaman? It looked a bit odd. I mean, it yeah. worked out, but... I think it could have been good. Like, it was uh, the first kill where Shadow Shaman just went, was behind. It was not there yeah. for some reason, and then... Why did he buy boots? I mean, I think it's pretty good. Because this hero has slow movement speed and low range. You need the movement speed to, like, get up there and hit people, I think. Better than, like, wind lace plus just normal items? If you have wind lace, you still have, like, 200 movement speed. <laughs> it's so slow. It's like the slowest here in Dota. Yeah. CM is faster than him, right? But like five. Or the same. Uh, Might be the same. Maybe the same. Yeah. Not as slow as stream protect. Treant and Ricky? Evoker are like the slowest. I think Ricky's pretty slow too, right? Oh, Ricky, yeah. But, um, okay. Now the silence band comes out. Mm -hmm. See how it Against the Phoenix, of course, and mm -hmm. the Shadow Shaman too. Yeah. The Weaver gets ignored despite not being banned. Which is and interesting. The I think there's a good chance CNC want to get a, like a second stage Weaver because they play it on both off lane and safe lane. But I don't think you. Last game, the Shaman Phoenix support duo worked because they had a Shaker. Like, you need that good initiating stun with these heroes. Yeah. And also, wait, he gave them a way to protect the egg. So, Shaker or something along those lines is probably what they want, either for a three or four position. Probably going to get banned out, though, by VG. I think it should be, yeah. Would Magnus do the same thing? No. Not for me, at least. No, Magnus is like a very different kind of hero. He's not really a disable in the way a Shaker is. Yeah. He's more team bet, well, team fight as well, and he empowers your carry. But um, Shaker like protects the Phoenix and gives you a way to start a fight. Yeah. And he has like low cooldown stuns, mm -hmm. which is very important. Yep. Are there any other heroes that could do the same thing if your Shaker <sighs> does get banned out? I think Earth Spirit's one of the ones that comes to mind for me. Yep. Uh, that means you have to play Phoenix or Shaman as a core, which mm. was not what they did last Ten game. But mm. well, they have done it before, at least yeah. with the with the Shaman for Fufu. I mean, they could do something like Shaman Earth Spirit. It's quite a, a lane that can yeah. uh, set a lot of dominance. The nice thing with the Shaker is he's a lot tankier like that. Ags build, the Treads Ags, you get pretty tanky. Earth Spirit does If you have Earth Spirit with those two, you're very squishy. Yeah, mm -hmm. but Earth Spirit is really good against Morph as well. Yeah, he gets the Vessel and then he kind of tanks up a little bit. Yeah, and if you ever get instant silence off before he has Manta, he just dies. Yeah. When is the last band? Like, Vici game, it looks like a perfect Lina game. Yeah. I love that hero and it's really good against Phoenix. It was it was really good last game too, but I didn't pick it up. No, I got no, it banned. Was banned. It was banned? They could have fourth picked it though. It was banned. Yeah. Best very fair, final uh, band. Six. I mean, yeah, yeah, but I mean, like, a second phase, it looked really good already. Yeah, they, they didn't want to pick it. They could have picked it instead of what, yeah. their fourth pick, which the, was... The band yeah. Necrophos. And one of these teams has to pick Lina. Like, it's good for both both of the teams, I feel. They didn't ban the Shaker. I'm surprised by that. But it's really good against the Morph, too. Yeah, Cuckoo had a great game on that. After the early game, yeah. That was rough. After the early game, sure. Yeah, he was up going ham. He did it six times. Maybe it's because they're planning on picking the Shaker. That's what... SAP ones. That's possible. Shake Alina. Shake Alina. Or Alina Wyvern. It's a classic combo as well. That's very good. Also possible. It's just like you shouldn't give TNC the same draft again and just one with it. It feels like. But do you think it's also a bad idea to just go for the exact same draft two games in a row? Because your yeah, opponents I mean, are adjusting. They're, they're not picking yeah. the same lifesteal or stuff as I'm last time. They're not going to go exactly the same, but like the. Like, like if you have three out of the five already and they, they yeah. get, offer you like a lot of the sable. They'll pick the same like backing heroes and then they'll pick different cores. Yeah. Ah, so they go for the shaker themselves. I like it. Very yeah. good. 
now now the non shaker ban makes yeah. sense. Uh, no reason to give it to TNC again. Yeah. What can I get instead? Well, the TNC CEOs are quite good against Shaker, though. It's not like terrible. Mm -hmm. Could see another Spectre even. Spectre could be pretty good against yeah. like the Shaker Axe. And there's still the classic good, yeah. PL if you want. Yeah. It's kind of scary now. Like they got a lot of lockdown for him, but still good if you play well. And yeah, they kind of took care of the PL pick with the Shaker already. Yeah. It's it's not fun to play a PL to the Shaker. Not fun, but not impossible. Not impossible. 58% win rate. That's mm. not bad. Not bad. A lot of bands. A lot of bands. Not as many as Necro. Oh, Ooh, Elder, Titan. Elder Titan. There's the stun hero to replace Shaker. According to New some, hero. this was going to be the hero of the tournament. Who? Fogged. So fogged. Oh. <laughs> yeah, fogged. Yeah. fogged he love, he loves Elder Titan. He's always playing it in pubs. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's but Elder Titan, I that's mean, like... Morphling was used to be the counter. Yeah, the spirit gives magic resistance reduction, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah you have so to get close to do the armor. Yeah. How about this hero? Five seconds Which one? Remaining. The Mirana. Oh, please no. Um, one point. Oh, that hero's so need, boring. They need an against, the, against the Phoenix. I, I'd rather see the Lina. There has to be a Lina in one of these two picks. Don't you call Mirana an egg killer as well? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's. I think we just prefer the Lina okay. as a hero. Mirana's... Not had the best room master. The worst. Oh, like who's playing core though? There's no way Earth Spirit will play core, right? So it's Rasta again? Or maybe Phoenix? It's probably Rasta. <laughs> you don't know anymore. I want to see, see some Tinker. Some Armel Tinker. Mm. Uh, I still want Lina. Big Lina here win. 38% win rate. Okay. That's not great. I can see him just picking a Spectre again, even. Huh. I mean, Spectre is just all around quite solid. Avicii Gaming's lineup looks so strong right now. It's a little bit scary. D yeah. Gaming's turn to battle. TA. TA. So you can pick a TA, ban like a Husker or something. Spread it yesterday against the Lions. But it was mainly because Koikwa's Hero Pool is not so suitable against TA. Mm. Where or Ori, I mean, Ori even beats TA with Lina, so what can, what can you say? If he does that, doesn't. Uh, Armel's TA, though, is. It's Armel's TA. Uh, Armel's TA is pretty good. It's very good. Remaining. One of the best. Yeah. Top three. Top one. Five seconds remaining. Top. So How good is your TA? Not that good. Is not in the top ten. <laughs> not in the top, top, top ten. Top hundred though. <laughs> no, I don't think no, so. I don't think so either. Top hundred one. Want me one, bro? Spectre ban. Okay. And the Husker. Should uh, be, but or uh, Lena is still in the pool, so maybe Lena ban coming yeah, out. But Black says he. he can play Lina against TA. I don't think so myself. But Ori beat no one's TA with Lina. No. That must have been with ganks or something. No. I don't believe you. He solo kills You're him. actually lying. He did solo kill him. But the lane was still went like pretty 50-50. Yeah. I think Lina can go like 40-60 versus a good TA. Like you can pick Lina into TA. It's just you're going to have a tough lane. Yeah, it's not nice. This is I watch CCNC play TA and he destroys always the TA. So. That's one of his best suits. What if they just pick Jakiro? The Husker ban still. I don't think you actually... Jakiro doesn't like crush TA mid. What do you want for a carry here? A fat hero? There's PL still, if we want to just go... Just don't overthink it and pick the simple option. What about mm. if they got Timber Saga and three strength heroes already? Not too <sighs> many stuns? They're going to... You get like, kind of counterpicked by the mid, mid like a Lina type hero is going to come out. And they have so much lockdown as well remaining. for him. Yeah. Timber sounds... Rough. Five seconds. Well, what other heroes are there than PL? PL Timber. Uh, mm. I feel like there's no carries anymore. That exist. <laughs> like five carries. Thank you, Ice Frog. Mm. Monkey's banned. That could have been okay against I all mean, the melee. I mean, so many carries are banned out too. Yeah. It's like six carry bans or something. <laughs> <laughs> you go PL. Say the hero then. An I analyst. Do it. I'll say PL. You say PL? I said PL as well. No, I say Faces Void. Ooh, I say Faces Void as well. I like Void it. Phoenix, Void ET. Here we go. Yeah. I mean, it's good. Really good combo because Elder Titan removes the magic resistance and Faces Void, he does magic damage. But that's it's the only so follow up, right? Very good combo. I mean, Phoenix, the Chrono? Phoenix magic damage is crazy mm -hmm. too. Like, when he gets that level 15 talent, the Fire Spirit with the Sunray, that's going to mm -hmm. burn through these heroes. And Morphing's really scared of uh, Faces Void. Once you get Shadow Blade, you can actually solo kill you every time. True. Well, what's yeah. the answer that VG Gaming has to this then? Alina is not good anymore. 
Lena. They you want can, some um, mobile hero, maybe. Tinker. Brewmaster <sighs> can make the void is miss in the chrono, right? I want to see some yeah. like ember okay. and cyclone spirit. in the chrono. It's Lena. It has to be something that doesn't get crushed by TA. I mean, ember, ember could work. Ember storm, I think. Ember St storm. Good. A storm is rough though against TA. Yeah, storm. Storm is Brute. a void in the game too. Ember. Ooh. Whoa! Oh. New hero. Wait, was Spooky this the team that picked it last time? This team has always loved um, it. Definitely was uh, no, it was 18, LGD. but I don't think it was LGD Vichy. It was against LGD. the Lions. I mean, it's, I don't know how this... This lane used to be one of the heroes that could lane against TA with the Spirit Siphons these days. Still can. Still can? Okay. Yeah. Because the refraction is just a non-factor in the lane, basically. Okay. But the question is, how good is, is it how later? How good? Look, TNC got this, I believe. I think they're just playing better right now. Their draft looks solid. Got good combos with the Void ulti, and I, I I don't know, maybe Death Prophet's a great hero still, I just don't know, but I'm not I'm not sold on the 10th pick Death Prophet right now. I'll have to agree with that. I feel like TNC is looking good with their lineup, and they're feeling strong, and they're just playing better, honestly, right now. So I'm going to go TNC. That's two. Are you going to make it three for all? Copy nah, me. Nah, nah, we're going VG. No. VG. No. Yeah. Well, you're wrong. Do you say why, at least? Because I think... The DP uh, kind of. Little, little, little. I'm, I'm wrong already. Wrong. Sorry. No, uh, I would I'll like to still hear it. Wrong. No, I, I just think DP is a good uh, yeah, fit for the lineup, you know? They missed push, they missed team fight, DP gives both of it. <laughs> she sucks. All right. We'll see about that. Yeah, yeah. No, but she's good. We'll see what's going to happen this third game. And if the Death Prophet is, uh, is any good as the last pick, what do you guys think over on the commentary desk? It's a great question. Well, what do you think, Grant? Oh shit, I don't know. What do you think, Bulldog? <laughs> just <Any> kidding. Casters? <laughs> yo, yo, Bulldog, I need some tips to be an analyst. Give me give me two right now. Yeah. yeah just scream a lot and okay. do fake hype. All right. That's all you need. I'm Questions ready. at the I'm end. I'm ready. Like, Why'd that happen? I'm ready for this. Okay. Right. <laughs> now, I, I don't know. Looks like uh, I, I think Vici has a pretty better draft. TNC's pretty all in on all their team fight. We'll see. Elder Tyne's a garbage hero, but I guess you guys believe in it. Well, I am ready for this uh, for this cast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Grant. We're back in the seat right now, ready to go. Uh, I like the TNC lineup. It's a lot more action-packed. Faceless Void is something I know you've been calling out as a core pick for a while now. Yeah. We finally get to see it here. But Vici, it's not overly exciting. I mean, Ori, I like him more on the flashy kill style heroes, like the Ember and such. Uh, Death Prophet seems a bit more... Like, I have an objective yeah. at hand, I need to get it done. What do you think about it? Uh, it's going to be interesting. It's a hero who won't completely get crushed by TA. I mean, I think TA still wins this, but I, I love Armel's TA, by the way. He's one of my favorite TA players to actually watch. And I don't watch too much SDA, but when I do, it's Armel just dominating on that hero. So we'll, we'll see if Ori can just kind of weather the storm. You know, they get to the team fight thing. If there's like one bad chrono in this game, I feel like that can we're just go laugh. super. Yeah, we're going to laugh. And then yeah. it'll go like super punished and. I don't know, man. The paparazzi morphling. This is a pretty scary, like hero player combination to play against. How do you think you would rank like a paparazzi morphling? Because this day and age, we got some crazy morphling I players out there, like Nisha and such. I think Nisha is probably number one, and then I'd probably get paparazzi number two, honestly. Damn. Yeah, I think Nisha is like on a whole nother level in here. I have, I, I know he's a good player, but just watching him min max his is like a attribute shifts and stuff it, mm -hmm. it's actually just insane but paparazzi second there i think they play a little differently as well paparazzi likes to play more of a i'm just gonna farm a lot yeah. and nisha will join in early on those mid-game fights so we'll have to see if that's a yeah. continuing trend for this game at this point early uh exchange of tips between teammates here everyone's gonna get that feel good feeling they all tip each other it's like that well, yeah. they'll tip Ori. Like, yo, Ori, Good luck, sir. you're the man. Good luck versus <laughs> Yeah, And this is going to be the DY Brew. We've seen it once. And you know what? I, I enjoy it. He plays it just like Puppy. He won't, like, get a blink, blink in, ulting, create cast. He will, like, ulti, like, 20 meters away and just run in with all the pandas. And I actually like that style of five Damn, panda. Damn, the disrespect, Gabby. Yeah, I mean, like, don't cross the line. Nah. You're going to have to go the long way around you're, right now. And he's gonna, I, I want to see if Gabby will actually hit him. Are they going to trade hits? Oh, well, he's got Yang over yeah, now. Yeah, there you go. Okay, they just trade a couple of hits. There you go. Be a fun little lane here with the Earthshaker Axe duo. And for now, it's just Gabby. But I imagine he's going to have to get some assistance eventually. In the meantime, it's Tim's trying to scout out for that first courier to cross the street, but he'll be waiting quite a while, I imagine, eventually to dip. Yep, this is one of those uh, those things where you just see nobody's top lane. It's just Gabby top lane. Yo, where's this Phoenix? Even Faith, look, at he's behind the creep wave. They know the Phoenix is just probably sitting here, honestly. It's a, it's a pretty obvious play. Yeah. So, Courier's probably going to be stalled out. 
Same with the time of the Phoenix right there. Yep. And that's why you see Armel actually plays it so aggressively. He's like, I got to make this guy. And he already has a health potion, actually. So he doesn't even need to, to bring the chicken out. It's, it's actually, I'm really surprised. Why is Tim still here? After you see that health potion on Ori, so. Yeah, looks like he'll finally step away. But we even have Fade rotating over this mid lane, possibly, for a little bit of assistance. Yep. Well, Tim, he's still... Oh, it's a chicken! It's, it's gonna come... Woo! Oh, oh, oh. He's... Oh, well, well. He's the flying get Flying well. get it. Gotcha. And that is gonna take a salve and a mantle off the table. And that's a great snipe from Tim's long investment time now worth. Yeah. Definitely worth it there, and that's the the thing he saw. The health potion was already used by Ori, so Ori was going to preemptively bring another one. It just can't. Too bad. All those tips can't buy another courier that they got the start of the game. Yeah, the one. yeah you see Yang, the old double double stout shield. Th this is why people don't like Axe. The thing is, this Void is going to get farmed, too. Like, we, we talked about this. Axe will get tons of farm more than the carry, but the, the, the carry, like a Spectre Void, as we've seen, they will just last hit on everything under the power of the Quelling Blade. See the Fisher fly out on the mid lane, a little bit of harassment from Fade, who'd been hanging out here for quite a while now. Just trying to kind of tip the scales back towards Ori's side a little bit if possible, considering he has to kind of now cope without having that courier. Yep. And this is kind of the problem when you do pick the axe, like where does your other support go? And we see Fade just like kind of running around aimlessly. There's not much for him to do because you can't just sit top. What are you to do? Harass the void under a tower? You can't. Yeah. Well, now heavy contention at the bottom towards the pool camp a bit. Boogie's trying to contest as best he can. Obviously our man, Mr. Ding DY, tries to fend him off a bit, but that's when Tim's rotates in, and now it's a full pincer. And, uh, well, DY goes down. Yeah, he does, and that is a plus 66 damage on Ninja Boogie. What are you going to do? And usually when you see an Elder Titan, you want to block, actually, the, the big camp on your side. And he hasn't, so Ninja Boogie's actually going to stack the camp, and that just gives him more spirit damage. Like, I think DY has to block this camp. I wonder if that's just something he thought he could pass on this time, or it can't be lack of experience going against an Elder Titan in this kind of setup, but now he stacks the camp, and that's going to be just more firepower. Yep, he's stacking up, and look, he's going to bring it his way. He's like, you want to swing he for now, but here something. comes the firepower now. He's going to smack it home, but there's a good fade fissure to slow them down. Coop is going to be forced out the other direction, but this is full aggro setup. And now Wait. Ninja Boogie's going to be smacking him home. Oh! Oh! Pops the wand. Really wanted to get one more hit, but can't get there. Yeah, no, I, I don't know if we... Hopefully, maybe we can see it. How'd the chicken die? Dyer's courier died, and I have absolutely no clue where. I assume maybe the axe just spun on it or something? Another one of those? Yeah, it oh, might have been. God. I actually didn't see it. That was on me. But yeah, it just died. I'm like, what? Where? How? Well, if we have the technology, I'm sure we'll get to scan it out in a moment's time. But for now, it's just something we'll have to cope with. Both sides losing their courier. Obviously, the BG-1 has returned in full flight mode. Bottom so, lane is where things are frisky now. Yeah, this is a... Full, full fledged aggressive setup right now by and Morphling TNT. does not like like Morphling is is the saddest person in this tri lane right now. Obviously they're already getting pushed back. Cuckoo's getting some gold, but we'll see. There already is gonna be a little rotation. Tim's will actually find the haste rune. We'll see if he saves it. Cuckoo with the aggressive tip throwing that way. And he gives him the sorry. Sorry I tipped you. Don't wanna be disrespectful. Yeah, wait, what? Now Cuckoo is gonna pay the price for it, even hands his own life what? over. Cuckoo's just too How nice. This well, is too nice, I guess. How do you accidentally tip, say sorry, and then <laughs> he die? Well, fed, what is the, what? He probably fed <laughs> all chatting sorry. Cuckoo's just overthinking just, these times now. How do you even oh, accidentally God. tip? Yeah, now he overthought that. That is not a good fight. Oh, <laughs> man. Because that's that just, is it so was a awkward. full thousand gold lead for TNC, and now it's in Vici's favor. His manager might have done it. Anyways, yeah. here bottom lane, back to harassment on the DY. They're going to force him back a bit. But the big thing going for Vici Gaming is that the Axe is just bringing in lots of money, of course, to the top lane. But I guess you could say the same for Gabby. Total win-win up there. Oh, fade. One little pixel off would have got the kill there because it would have blocked him off. And he did not have a fraction. But the bounty runes come out, and it's looking pretty good for TNC. TNC is going to be a four out of four Ooh. here. Gabby's running for it, eats the battle hunger, but he snipes it up, and that He's is fine. money in the bank for TNC. Does have the time walk right now. They hit him with a fissure. Try to time out the call, but obviously he's going to be able to leap away. The mistiming bottom. You see Paparazzi just narrowly escaping, or narrowly escaping. Yep. Chris Dive will burn him a bit, but he's going to be fine. Still find it crazy that like attribute shift doesn't cost any mana. That's still mind blowing to me, but. Now Gabby top. He is just gonna get run by Yang. This is the problem. He is a level seven axe now. Oh no, and another Yee. missed call. Yeah. Yang is somebody Yang get this guy a good, good phone provider or something. This guy's oh. just dropping the calls all over the place. You got you gotta hit. This is game three. Like you're actually one game away from going to the main stage top six. That is a ton more DPC points. Like you get sixth and even just like qualify for another major. You're almost guaranteed Bottom. to a TI. Our boy. 
Ninja Boogie in a bit of trouble here. Uh, or not. Fissure slows him down, but BG Gaming don't really have any additional firepower to follow up. And instead could put the pressure towards Cuckoo's side. They'll smack him down a bit, but Boogie's also there to assist. You just see how weak this tri is. The fact Cuckoo... He... Alright, yeah, here comes like the... It is. Okay, okay, I knew it. I knew it. Hey! Oh, we. <laughs> I thought he, he was level six. I thought he was gonna dunk. No, he got level six up then. He kind of saw the spin. career there. It seemed yeah, he like. did. That was a nice so, play. Worked out well. Meanwhile, bottom, we have a fissure up. They're looking to go for Cuckoo yet again, but Ninja Boogie dishes out the spirit, slows him down. They look to turn around. They grab him up with the shackles. Yeah, damage plus one forty four. Ooh. Smacks him up. Paparazzi gonna be forced uh -oh. to shift on the game, but they put their focus back on a Ninja Boogie. But, oh! oh, Gabby says, stop shit. it right there. Drops the Chrono right on top of their head. And he's gonna be able to grab the one. Boogie. With, what? The, with the assist from Gabby what, stepping in from oh. the turn buckle, but then Boogie hands his own life over. What? Does that turn into a Gabby double kill? What is They'll take it for on? what it is, but it's just a bit crazy. That was such a good rotation by Gabby there. Like, all of a sudden, there's just three heroes piled up. Boogie baits them in. Just perfect three-man chrono. You get all three. Boogie probably didn't have to die there, but you know what? Oh, well. TNC, they are playing this so well. And they're just not scared of this train. Like, Cuckoo is actually farming three on one, and yeah. There you see he waveformed in to get the last hit on Boogie and just went yep. right into the Chrono. And if Cuckoo wasn't on the outside, I mean, they would have killed all of them before Ninja died, but say la vie. Well done there. See Boogie back on the move here. Smoke towards this mid lane to get a nice ward down. I think Yang's got to be the, he's about a thousand away from his blink. He already has the Vanguard. He has to he's be the gross. playmaker for this game. But he's the, huge. I mean, we saw the axe last game. It's like these axes, they get a lot of farm, but like if you fail your first few ganks, you don't feel like a hero really anymore. So we'll, and we'll if see. you end up even feeding, worst case, you're just going to feed yeah. over a huge net worth of damage. Meanwhile, bottom shackle set up, looking to go aggressive behind the tower. DY cannot hang. It's finished off right then and there. Oh. Gabby needs to be a little bit careful here, though. Oh, he, he already time walked. And Yang just shows up, calls him, what? and dunks him off with that faceless head. Mm. Right. I, thought, I was talking like with gods, it's like TNC will always just do these little throwy <laughs> things, no matter how well they're playing, because they're playing very well. And then, like, why did Ninja die there? There's no need for that. Why Why did the Void, like, barely time walk? And then, oh, man, TNC, you guys are owning. Just simmer down. Yeah. Just just little, little fribbies they like to hand over there. But. Yeah. Who gets the tower to my top? Yep. Now we do have, of course, level seven now in this Death Prophet in the mid lane, and same as the case that we talked about time and time again, whether it be the Lycan, whether it be the DK, if Ori is given the opportunity in this lane, we'll use that Exorcism as he is now. If they can make it a plus nice one, plus shot. a tower push, that would be huge. Yang even coming in from behind, not even necessary. They get the job done, plenty without it, and almost right on cue, they will start hitting and taking down that tower. Fortification comes out for now, but we'll see if TNC are gonna call in for reinforcements to defend it or not. They got Tims and Ninja here. They might just wait for Armel to do this. But I mean, it is a slow tower deck. Like, level one Death Prophet ulti is not the bee's knees. That's for sure. Like, look at the little, the little ghost fish. Like, we're trying. Ghost little, little fish. Koi. Isn't that what they are? I don't know. Yeah, I guess. Certainly not minnows or goldfish, but yeah. they feel like it at this point in time. They do. And they do de de decent damage to that tower. And against a TA who wants to take your tower as well, it's, it's, it's a nice place. Good rotation. Enough to get at least the tower just below half of its life, but uh, here we see Cuckoo Top. aggressively what moving forward. Cuckoo would, could find himself in a bit of trouble. Paparazzi didn't have the damage, obviously, to be able to clean that up, and he's just instead going to clean up the ward, so Even that's better. free money for him. Yeah, yummy. Yeah, that's uh, probably actually better than the kill. It's, what, like 38 times... Let me do the math here. It's like 38 it. times... Don't hurt yourself. Whatever. We'll just say it's a lot right. of gold. That's good gold. Yep, that is great gold. <laughs> I love gold, and so do they, and I don't know, I'm just... I'm curious to see how this Faceless Void combo is going to work, right? It sounds pretty easy on paper. You just throw it out, Elder Titan throws a Spirit in there, Stomp, you have the Phoenix. But that does mean you have to get quite a few heroes yeah. in the Chrono. There's a lot of people that, if caught outside the Chrono, could interfere. I mean, even the Bruce split, let's say. Bruce split's uh, really big, yeah. Yeah. Death Prophet Silence. Uh, I'm sure she'll get, eventually get a Yules, or someone will have a Yules. It yeah. could just be a real trouble for someone Pain like Faceless. Until you have a BKB. Exactly, though. exactly. And it looks like he's not going to prioritize an early BKB. He's going to segue towards what looks like a Shadow Blade possibly first. That's a little bit of difference, right? The only two regions we really see playing Void, it feels like, is SEA and China. And China, yeah. they love the early BKBs. And it seems SEA, definitely a little more aggressive. Yeah. 
Maybe with the exception, I think Rezo might have played it yeah, once I think yesterday. Rezo. Yeah. yeah, but Faceless Void is certainly not getting a, as much airtime as you would expect. You got to go through like that at least what the first six or seven You're like, main course PL, first. TB. Oh God, they're banned. Oh no, even Luna's banned. What do we do? Nick, so that didn't work. Oh, so. God. <laughs> And there they are. And looks like they want to pressure middle right when this uh, Death Prophet ulti is coming up. They have level six on Panda because he has the tome. So he doesn't, I mean, he technically has it right now. Let's see. This Void, I think you want to, you almost want to use this this uh, Chrono off cooldown. So Blink debut, see. incoming mid lane. There it is. Blink set up onto the bird. Cuckoo is nearby, tries to help up with the Hex. Jump in from Gabby. He's got the Chrono down. They're locked under it. But now a counterplay is it's going to be a setup from the Morphling on the outside. Oh They're going to be committing God. with the wards on top of it. Now the Exorcism comes out. This could be trouble for TNC. Running and hiding within the trees is going to be Gabby. Paparazzi, though, eating the blunt of damage. It's going to quickly shift out from that morph. Gets his life back. And now Cuckoo's going to be the one eating the wrath of damage. And uh, they could just step off now, clean up these wards, take the tier one. D-Way may pay the price, it looks like here. He is super Phoenix is low. back level six, too. Yeah, okay, jumps in, pops the egg. They're going to begin to burn up. They think about going for the egg damage, but they're not going to be able to get it. Can they get Ori on top of it? Certainly would make it feel that much sweeter, and they do. Down yeah, those wards, the Servant Wards being up the entire time just like wins them that fight. It deep pushes all the creeps from yep. hitting their tower. It's doing insane amounts of damage and oh, they're just the fighting Yang. into it. We're gonna set up a call. Oh, the game sense oh. or something. They, they have that ward on the high the ground. Ward, they saw yeah. the TP. You're right, you're right. Nice job. But I do want to say, shout out to Paparazzi. He switches into the Rasta, shackles the shackler. Bottom is fade to get out. Oh, wow, spoke too fade. soon. Fade, fades away and back to the fountain. He's going to be safe. Got to get it. Broke, though, is, uh, mm. is this, this Earthshaker. Like, you're the four position. He has 200 gold and tranquil boots. Like, you, you wished you'd already started farming for this blank, but nothing yet. A little bit of, I mean, he's got some decent XP. At least he's got his level six. True. But you're right. It, as far as how he can hang in these fights, he's going to be very frail, and his setup opportunity for that dunk is going to feel very he tough. Goes. Ninja Boogie is just, he's doing his warning mission. He's going to die for it for sure. Getting a hold of him here between the two of them, the Bash brothers. Damn. They even dish out the Damn. echo and the dunk. Damn! God, guys! They do not like Ninja Boogie, apparently. They just, they work him. They did not like that tip from earlier or something. No, they, didn't. they just made him pay. They really did. All right, 8 to 7. Each pulling themselves back, though, a slight net with advantage for TNC at this point in time. It's all about this chrono. It's up in 20 seconds again. I like mm. Gabby is being very active with it. He's not just farming. Move bottom. The bottom. Ward's committed here. Can't quite get nice the lock silence. onto Fade. Finally, they're able to get the grab onto him, and Armel's showing up just in time, and he's got some heavy hitting damage coming through him. Boom! Smacks down Fade. Gets the finish, uh -oh. and they can turn this into a tier Ori. one push. Or he's gonna die, I think. He has Chrono up. He's, he's getting Chrono. This is a fine oh, solo. Oh, he chrono. hung around. Yep, just that little yep. bit extra too long. He's gone for sure. Chrono justified on that one to take the DP off the table, and that will also turn into a tier one push. Yep, they are. It, it is five heroes bottom for that kill and that tower. Meanwhile, you, you have middle being farmed out by Yang. You have top being farmed out by Paparazzi. Honestly, that is not that bad for Vici Gaming. Yeah, they're trying to get what looks like a blade mail set up onto the axe. That could be a little troublesome for TA if she's caught on the bad end of a call, or even the faceless void. But yep. yeah, you're right. I mean, Morphling still has a high ceiling ahead of him to kind of build into. And TNC are the lineup that have that snowball-y strat, so. Yeah, they do. I mean, obviously Void can go into the late game, but against a, a morph DP, like DP six slotted, like people don't really think like late game, oh wow, DP is amazing. You get like an Octarine, Shiva's kind of build, Sheep Stick BKB, like you are a scary ass yep. hero. You are actually are. Once you're able to address, which may be one of her weaknesses is just, she could be on the frailer side or just weaker side. No. It's prone to being bursted and blown up, which is a, something that TNC's lineup could certainly do. Once she's able to mend that and build up her durability though, then she becomes a bit of a problem and she just loves those long lasting fights where exorcism can continue to put in work. Yep. Looks like they want it. I'm looking bottom, the Yang at the bounty rune. Yang should just deny it right now if they're not gonna take it. But with, with that, I don't know, maybe Fate will go up and get it. We'll see. Down here and just chilling. All right. Boogie and Gabby are both in the neighborhood. But meanwhile, mid lane, there's the jump call from Yang with the blade mail set. Immediate hex, though, from Cuckoo. Stops him right there, and Armel should be able to walk out and away. He's going for it. This yes, they are. You They're looking this. to set him up. Pops the refraction. A little bit blinks away. Messed up micro there, maybe. By I think if he committed that immediately when he saw that, I think that would have been completely okay. But that 
he hesitated, and obviously they don't get the kill now. I got some three bears oh, hanging Yang. around, but Yang gets the follow-up call. This one on to Cuckoo. This one should be much easier for them to get the finish. There's the dunk. And, you know, just uh, these little pickups. TNC's got to be wary of these. Like, your Chrono, it's coming up in 50 seconds. Just don't do anything dumb until then. Yep. They smoke, and uh, they're, going they're hoping that by the time they go to the mid lane, they will have that Chrono up and at the ready. Vici taking a good route here. If they head up north and away from the possible trouble, then they should avoid any conflict. Yep. Oh, but Yori! Oh! Got the invis, thankfully. Yeah, they have the, the sentry there themselves. I I think, yeah, if you're Vici Gaming, you, you know something's up, and look at this. You have someone bottom farming. You have middle going to push in. You're going to farm. You have top farming. You're actually fine with these, these movements. Yep. Armel back on the mid lane tower. Begins to siege it down. Or he's still hanging around here, but they're kind of curious about their commitments, and probably for the better because Cuckoo's around the corner with Gabby. They're going to see Cuckoo now. Pops the exorcism, but Gabby could swing into things. It should is, go down. Still. You know, it might, they might just sack him. They're going to sack him. He's a bit out of position, and it might be too hard for that commitment. Plus, everybody could rotate over to that tower. They already have four on deck, so it's probably for the better that TNC decide to pull the plug on that idea. Yep. Gabby actually almost does have a shadow blade. Good, and not, not just for initiation. Oh, Walking to my crack. <laughs> See ya. All right. Well, goes down. And this is what I mean. These are just like random strange pickups. You have the the chrono from Void. You you got to be using that. Yeah, a lot of like what we saw in game number one. Yeah, they had opportunities good. to take fights, but they're not really jumping at the chance. They're kind of waiting and lollygagging around a little bit before it is they get a lot onto like game it. One, because right, you, Death Prophet's exorcism on cooldown. This this isn't really a hero now, but you're not punishing the yeah. fact that exorcism was on cooldown. We'll see. Dy, he's just he's strangled up. I want to see how close. Okay, Urshiger is getting close to Blink because of all that space. You know, he got a kill. He went to the jungle, went mm -hmm. top, getting very close, and that. That's going to be scary, because Fisher is very good versus Void as well. Like, Earthshaker, obviously, you don't blink Echo the Void, but you can just Fisher him, and with level 4 Fisher, takes away, like, half the Chrono. We also do have the Shadow Blade now complete. Uh, Gabby? Let's, I want to see. Let's see some plays, Gabby. We need to see him. He pops it now. Eats the regen. I'm not sure. It looks like that ward is not going to spot the regen disappearing, so they're not sure this is happening. DY is... The man between him and that mid lane here. Ooh, they, they, but on the other front, they've already made their approach. Looking to get the grab. Impossible snipe finish here of Paparazzi, but he does manage to waveform to the low ground. Gabby chases trouble. to the other side. He's caught from behind. D1, or DY, rather, keeping him in his place a bit. Now he hops to the high ground here. Happy to fight under their own wards, of course. The bear's going to have to back off. Oh, he a lot of damage. He's got to be careful. There. Armel will finish him off if given the opportunity. Okay. Panda ulties down. Another pretty big cooldown. You know Exorcism is still down. You might think about taking a fight again if you're if you're dire. You you gotta do something though, right? They're sitting here as five while Paparazzi actually just farmed bottom. They shrined up. They're yeah. farming middle. You either gotta farm or you gotta fight. You can't just hesitate between the two. I guess they feel like it's pretty awkward. I know they had um, committed the wards by the ancient camp, but I guess they feel like without those it's not enough gunpowder for them to be able to try to take a fight, but Vici feel quite the opposite. They are smoked, they're on the move, and they're happy to invade. Just on the high ground is going to be Armel. Pops the smoke. They pop the dust. He's able to blink to the low ground, but Gabby oh. welcomes him with a three-man chrono. Armel has to get to the high ground to get optimal damage out, and they are going to be able to burst down the DP. Follow-up echo, though, from Vici Gaming. Is it going to be good enough? Cuckoo steps in. Big ether shock to burst them down. They are going to lose two. Immediate buyback of the Death Prophet. Nice. Wants to get back yeah. to the action. Has the exorcism if needed, but it might be too late. Now wants to walk in regardless into the arms of three. TNC uh -oh. might want to swing Ori. Ori, what have you done? Oh my, and there Ori. you go. That is all Armel. Armel sat in the perk position. He knew like that smoke was coming. He sat where there was a sentry and an observer ward up here by the by the ancients. And right when the people come up, he just blinks away. Gabby goes in. That Cuckoo is so spots good. out Paparazzi. Super low. He gets the finish snipe oh there as God. well. Oh, everything coming up TNC. All right, yeah. Now, there you go. They take the big team fight. They get a, a random kill there. Paparazzi going for a bounty rune. And Cuckoo, right place, right time. Yep. Double bounty rune. Paparazzi, that's like seven bounty runes. Let's just keep we'll this train it. going. They're going to yep. go right into the Roche pit and take the Aegis now. Armel's just feeling himself. He's got the Deso ready to go, and he's just going to beat down the big boy. Yep. After this, he's going to be pretty much on his BKB. Yep, and there you see the replay, just a great chrono. Looked like maybe there'll be a turnaround with a, a great dunk by Fade there, but then Cuckoo just gets a five-man ether shock. 
and then hold That's the insane, yeah. axe right there. It's wonderful stuff. And here's your like, here comes the turnaround, in comes the DP. It's like, I'm Boom. here, here's my exorcism. And, and then they're like, wait, it's just her. Let's beat the hell out of her, wait, boys. Wait, and they oh, turn, yeah. <laughs> beat the snot oh. out of her. Oh, quite unfortunate. Paparazzi makes it away, but not for long, obviously. Heads to his own farming camp where Cuckoo stalks him and finishes him off. Just uh, absolute down in the dumps at the moment for Vici Gaming here. S five to six K net worth advantage at the moment going the way of TNC. And this is a great snowball opportunity for TA. Now has a huge, what I like to call BKB. girthy stack that yeah. she's farming through right here. And that will finish the BKB. Yeah, wow, this is a great play from TNC. I was a little nervous for like those two to three minutes where they just weren't really getting much done. And then yeah. uh, Vici, they, they kind of just baited him into that uphill fight. That was a great job by TNC. Gabby on Q is going straight Silver Edge here. Bar. Get in. All right. I'm, I guess I'm trying to understand why. Yeah, no one there that's like really anti, you know, like, oh, you got to have a Silver Edge for this one. I mean, yeah, it's good for a bunch of the heroes, but it's not like, yeah, we got to have it. All right. Well, regardless, it will give them the extra bit of damage and owning. extra bit of strength. And, well, in the meantime, they are going to try to move forward with this bottom tier one push. Cuckoo, though, obviously to defend it, keep the pressure off. Beachy Gaming don't feel comfortable being down here, though there is an invis room. Fatal take it. Has yeah. the ulti again. That's the thing, like, both teams have really good team fight, but when both teams have great team fight, it's just whoever gets the better initiating, right? There is the, the Chrono into the Elder Titan stomp, and yeah, we'll see. Earthshaker as well likes to be more of a counter initiate, as we saw, but the rest of his team was already dead. Yeah. You put on top of that, of course, the, the potency of the natural order with that ether shock, with that oh, egg. Yeah. It's just so much damage, deceptively strong damage. Anyone caught within that Chronos might as well be on a dinner plate at that point. Wow. I, fade. I still remember. I remember in ET, his spirit got both uh, the physical and magical reduction. That hero, that, that, was a, that was a fun time. I know Fog level, that was a fun time to be an ET player for sure. Oh yeah, those those kind of fun times. Like when Earth Spirit first came out, that was a fun time. All right, here's a replay of uh, oh, when we had the vision of the yeah, whole Cuckoo time. stalking so paparazzi, smart. and you know this is where it's just, Morphling is happy to be on full agility mode farming. But when you come across someone like this, bang, finishes him off instantly. Free snipe. Meanwhile, Elder's High Gold gonna be committed onto Yang, who runs up north to make it away from trouble. He's moving quite fast, but Gabby's on him. It's the Chrono onto the one. Fissure will slow him down a bit, but not going to save him, obviously. That's just a simple thing. If it is Chrono on cooldown, but they're going to find one oh, more on the uphill. Uphill. B-Y. Can they kill him before he ulties? He doesn't he have mana. He's yeah. dead. A wand, but I don't even think that will get him anywhere close to it, so he's just going to get smacked on down. All right, Cuckoo actually taunted him right there. He, he like, faked out the Ether Shock, like, ten times, and I was like, I'll take that kill, and... You know what? Cuckoo, he is playing so well. That's why you see uh, a lot of people are like, why do you go Tranquil Boots on an offlane hero? It's so dumb. Like, if he didn't have that move speed to get over to where the Morphling was, yep. he, he's just able to move between lanes, lanes, farm, and also secures him that free Morphling kill. Man, they are playing so well right now. This is, like, this feels very weird, right? We In this tournament especially, we've seen so many teams win game one convincingly, and then they just, like, stumble through game two and three, as we're seeing right here. Almost sounds kind of like an EG thing. Yeah, <laughs> they yeah, they always does. are super yeah. strong at the beginning. And then, and, then, like, oh. and then it gets to game three, and you're kind of like, uh. Meanwhile, oh, top lane. Oh, this was Fade gone. trying to cut the waves from behind and is going to get caught and punished for it. Uh, I think he queued up that silver. He's not buying it. He almost has a full BKB now. I think he just like queued it up on it. Like he was getting his shadow lane. He's like, whoops, I accidentally slipped into the quick buy. Yeah. Thank Ooh. God. There's no reason to get it. BKB on him, and then of course uh, the TA just means that they can snowball this one and maybe try to even close things out by 30 for 35 minutes or yep. so i think with a bkb he can't really die like the only thing he's scared of right now is getting silenced by that dp in his own chrono and not being able to like time walk out or get his health back but if he's bkb yep they, they have no lockdown for a, a bkb except axe but the chrono 25 life. minute runes popping up right now yang will be able to snipe one from the other side here and at least get his own yeah, they're just gonna lose a tier two top and right now, TNC is just playing perfectly. This is, I guess, game one really was just a wake-up call. You know, maybe they didn't sleep too well last night, you know, and then all of a sudden, game one slept a little bit more, and now you're rested up for game two and three. DJ on the prowl, though, trying to make something out of it. They just missed their opportunity at Gabby in the mid lane, but he jumps up to the ancient camp, and that's where they strike. Quick move in, quick dunk. Nice set there from Vici. They were thirsty to make something happen, and there they get it done. 
got it. That, they just had that war down. You gotta, you gotta make something happen, and they do. It's still a 9k lead, but you take down Void, which makes it so you're not too spin the map. I wouldn't be surprised if they tried pushing this middle tower with the Morphling. Because you can't just get a kill and do nothing. You gotta get a kill and do something. Yeah. TA is already on the scene, just in case they do decide to push forward, which, it, based on their body language, looks like they will not. They did ping out the ward, though, so uh, while there is a nice, deep, aggressive ward by TNC, it looks like it's going to be quickly debunked. Yep. Taken care of. Good eyes there from the supports. This is going to be... He took on... T T is very level 20, by the way, and took the Refraction of Spells very good for his Battle Hunger, as well as the, the Brewmaster Drunken Haze. All right, TNC, even without their Faceless Void at the ready quite yet. Take to the smoke. Let's go. And scout things out. I like it. They set up early because, I mean, it kind of catches VG off guard like, oh, the Void's not alive yet. There's no way he could yeah. be over here. Could TP to the Shrine side and get over in a heartbeat, but it's not necessary. Armel already jumps right in and hits so damn hard, obviously, on that DY support. Can really stand no chance. I could definitely see. I mean, if TNC wins this game, like it's looking like they might, I could definitely see Cuckoo's Shadow Shaman getting banned out. We've seen it, I think, three or four times now on that offlane. He's the only one really doing it, but you see right there with that Aether Lens blink, you can hex anyone from like halfway across the map and being undispellable now, pretty damn good. <laughs> Obviously, the shackles are also that thing's nuts. pretty yeah. crazy long. You can get Serpent Wards at just even more of a convenient position without having to put yourself at too much danger. Yeah, there's a lot of ups to the build for sure. And obviously, with the ridiculous base damage, he's going to get good last hits as yeah. well in the farming phase. So That's the thing. He loved that tri-lane versus tri-lane because they had an Earthshaker Panda Morphling. That's a garbage tri-lane. He's just sitting over here as a Shadow Show. He's like, this is great for me. Yeah, recovery mode, though, for BG at the time being, trying to pressure these lanes at least back out towards the river here. You see Yang kind of dancing around with Tim's a bit. And a Death Prophet. Very good. If he gets initiated on by the Chrono, It'll just and it will pop. He'll almost always yep. get his ulti because he can Yules immediately. He would rather ulti than Yules, but he might not have the time for that with the amount of damage from this TA. We'll see. That's the thing to watch out for. I mean, if TA gets the jump on her and hits her once, like you could just insta pop your Aeon disc too early. And we know the cooldown is so freaking long. Yep. Could be just taken out for the next fight. Hard push coming to okay. bottom lane. TNC looking to move in. Does he want to commit a chrono for this one? Nah, they didn't quite have the vision. Didn't want to risk it. And Yang's going to be able to make it away from potential do. That's one of those. If he, if he like, uses and misses it, I'm like, ah, I probably would have done the same, too. But he just doesn't come in. That's fine, too. It, it keeps the threat of it still on the playing field. And after they clear out things through the bottom lane, I suspect they're going to get some vision down here. Do they have any available? No, it doesn't look like it at the moment, at least. Oh, well, Tim's has one ward. Uh, it looks like they're waiting for their friend Gabby to come over so they can pop the purple stuff. Yeah, Vici, they, this is going to be a smoke into a smoke, it looks like. And right now they're pinging DY. DY doing some doing some bait shenanigans here. And they are actually just sitting still. Who would have guessed? DY's like, man, this is fun. I'm the bait. All right. DY, up front, Let's please. <laughs> Tell us what's happening. Whoa. Oh, it's Yang, though. And they jump right for oh, the back line. No. So they go for DY first and foremost to finish him off. And they get it before the split's going to even be there. Meanwhile, Cuckoo locks Axe in his spot. And they finish him off. And just like that, one, two, hit the deck. Bait TNC with a full advantage and moving forward. Make it three. Just, TNC what? came to play in game number three. And Grant, we're in store for it. what looks like another crushing if this keeps going. Yeah, it is. And that is so Gabby not even... Oh, wait, here we go. TA in the air. Wait for the fall down, but the Yule's on to Yang means he can't get the call follow-up. Buybacks from two. I think uh, TNC are going to be happy with all of that resource spending and could back out. No, they want to hang. They, they have... The, the thing is, they have to be... Yeah, exactly. They have to be so scared because Gabby did a good job of not using the Chrono right there. Like, he could have just wasted it on one hero, gotten the kill, but he saved it, and now they still have that threat. Who do you think is like his most valued Chrono right now? Who's he trying to lock within it? I am just a Morphling, probably. Because yeah. like even if the Morphling mol morphs to full strength, like they actually do enough damage, right? This this TA is Omega Farm. Yeah. Shadow Shun does a natural damage. order on top yeah. of everything. Too. He's gonna die. Like he's gonna die. Every Elder Titan time. was used to be just a good natural counterpart to the Morphling back in the day. Just oh Because yeah. Morphling was known I... to have such weak armor, and natural order just pretty much evaporates any potential armor he builds up. Yep, and that. I mean, I know that because that was the I played, you know, one professional game in the Navi for Navi US during the Damn. Summit Two qualifiers, and it was my one Elder Titan game. I went one in fifteen, but all I was told by Quark and Fog to put your spirit on the the uh, it was like the Lena, and we have a PA, and one dagger instantly killed him, and they're like, good job, even though I went one in twenty. We won. Shout out to Navi US, RIP. Well, I I just don't know. This Death Prophet is so under farm now with that and this and Yule's like. She's going 
you have to go these items, but you still yeah. just die like within a chrono because the you only have the 2.5 second of the, the combo breaker passive it's called and chrono lasts longer than that. You still just kill her in it. Yeah, I don't foresee opportunities for them to kind of use this exorcism to siege on forward for towers. These are all like exorcisms that are going to be held for potential fights that could come their way instead. Looks like there's a potential uh, stare down here in front of the Roche pit trap inside to obviously scout out any maneuvers in there. But TNC would love to take this one for themselves. They can take it for themselves super fast and Look easy. Bottom, Fiji though. just want to contest it. But hey, you want to you want to hang around Roche? We'll just go ahead and move down here and take your base if you like that. Yeah, that's Glyph committed now. Like the, the fact that a Cuckoo just baits out the gun. Look at they're gonna pop out the Glyph of their own. They're gonna get this. These siege units might be able to do enough damage to kill the tier three. That's ridiculous. And they're doing Roche. Yep. And while they're doing that, yeah, the Roche play. is gonna go down. This is such a good play. <laughs> Casual earn from Tim's being full harassment mode on a paparazzi, the man who was left behind to take care of it. And there we see the finish of that Roche. Isn't the trade normally a tier two tower for Roche? Instead, they get a tier three and Roche. That's Pretty like the best trade. deal ever. I know. Wow. I want to go to this There's pawn Panda. shop. Ulti. Nice oh. double call. Oh, okay, good grab. This could be an opening for Vici Gaming nice here, but a slide jewels. out and they eat the cheese. Gabby feeling good, moving forward, looking to right click down the axe, gets her done. Ninja Boogie. That would have absolutely been a kill on Void, but Ninja Boogie, the five position ET, gets the Yules off on him. Oh, nice no. Why? <laughs> Walks on four, just gets hand tied. This Taken game. down. I mean, Ninja. Oh God, Ninja, the whole team of TNC, I can't say enough. They have just played so this well this ridiculous. game. ridiculous. It was just an 18k net worth advantage. Amazing. I mean, they're in no rush. Look at Gabby's actually just going to take the, the Shrine top. And yeah, I'm looking at the EXP and gold grabs, and that is just... That's some, a yikes for me. Yeah, though, that yeah. is a, a very big one. It is just going straight <laughs> down. And there's the three-second shackle, uh, shackle duration, pardon me, from the, the Shadow Shone, one of my fate. I love that talent, man. You, It just lasts for... It literally lasts forever. And that's the thing where you have it together with, like, Ocarine Core. Yeah. It's like, mm -hmm. you're not going anywhere, <laughs> <laughs> sir, ever. <laughs> that's why you just literally hear that sound the entire team hey, fight. Hey, hey, yeah. Shut that man up. Please, someone stop him. Well, back to the bottom lane comes Sitting TNC. Right. Yeah, happy to siege away as Armel has that extra life. Then he gets oh. shoved on forward into the right. chrono where Gabby has taken out the dunk factor of this defense. No dunk going to be there for and well over a down. minute. TNC just came out in all cylinders for this game three. And they're trying to see if they can force Beach to throw in the towel nice and early. They're trying to hold on, or he has the Aeon disc to try to survive. Nice ward trap to trap the Morphling within, or that was just the illusion, rather. Still, good spot for the wards to try to get some damage done, but hey, it looks like they are going to be able to farm up all that additional money. A buyback forced out from Ori. Yay. And uh, Armel on the back of his second life, it looks like wow. will get taken down here. Tried to fight back a bit, but couldn't quite get a finish there. That's and, a lot uh, of gold. Well, Vici hold, and they get. Good amount of money for it. That was a 2K gold shift right there just for killing the T, and that was just way over late grip. That was, I mean, that's the first time we get, that was a bad chrono. Like, chronoed only the Earthshaker. The TA actually, I don't know if the TA blinked into it or if he chronoed on the TA, but, I mean, just chill, right? Couldn't you, you can just chip away at those Raxes. You have the Aegis on TA, and now you don't have the Aegis anymore. It's freaking elimination match at it a is. major. Just ch chill, TNC, but. We've talked about that. TNC has that in their body. If you're a TNC fan, you you damn well know they're going to make one of those throwy plays every game. And luckily, they're 18k up, so it's not as effective. At They'd have the to game. do that like a two or times. three more times, of yeah. course. Let's uh, think, you know, hypothetically, maybe for now, late, late game. You yeah. know, is that late? I mean, more paparazzi for... morph is a pretty damn scary, like six mm -hmm. slot of paparazzi morph. We'll see if he can get there, but. It's just, it's on this void. This void as well could get farmed, but if he just gets one good chrono on even just the morph, they're, they're going to be fine. They don't have that much save for the chrono. Yeah, he's even going for the Ags next. At least has queued up an Ags for now on that void, just so they have a chrono for every fight. So that way, I guess it's not so, you know, fragile that he hits that one critical one. And we see the gold share. And usually you don't see that big. The gold kills a 3K difference. Usually it's like 1 or 2K. They are just dropping D off right now. It's like I say, like the pinata moment here. I mean, TNC are pretty damn swelled up with money and candy. If Vici can strike, strike hard, they could burst it open and take the, the benefit of all that swinging money from yep. the high net worth advantage. And T just got enough money for the butterflies, so... I don't think you save her by. I'm pretty sure you just go by the butterfly at the, the secret shop over there and you take another flight, but we'll see. Yeah, we don't see any answers for the butterfly on Beachy's side at the moment. So I'm 
very curious how they plan on getting damage through this TA. We're going to have to rely solely on heavy burst damage, great dunk setup, let's say, and maybe even reflecting a bit of the damage through a blade mail. Shaker. Still just with that blink, but at this point, that's all you really need. Like, Fade, you just got to get in there. Mm. You've got you've to make something happen. This is one of those games, you're down 16k, you don't want to be the Earth Shaker in this game. Like, you could be the hero of the game, but more than likely, you're just like, it's all on you and it's not going to happen. To see who's going to make the next move here. We still have quite a while before the Roche is going to even be up, so T and C are going to try to go on some sort of smoke move, and oh, there it is, actually, already on the smoke move. Uh, arcane rune for Cuckoo as well. Mm, that is yummy looking. Very nice. I don't even need the Octary anymore. Guess what? You just got the shackles. Move in. There's the shock. There's the burst. They're looking to see if they can get D-Way out of here. Can they get it done? Looks it's like they permanent. can. Because he has the Octary, he doesn't need the Octarine core. It just says the Arcane rune. It's permanent shackles now, and they're just going to head back down bottom, it looks like. And they take D-Way out. DY would have been definitely a good disruptor for any potential high ground defense, but it's not the end of the line for Vici. Still holding the Echo Slam and such, they can pull out a decent defense. And I like this. Gabby is actually going for the Agon next. He realized, like, when the Chrono's down, they actually can't do that much. So making it a much shorter cooldown, I mean, it halves it to down to one minute. All right, good. jump in, immediate drop of the ward, saying, what are you going to do about it? Vici tried to get things started. Bursting him down. So far back. They want to kill these wards, but... Nerf's not clumping well. up too much for a bad chrono, let's say. You know what? You, you farm the wards of Paparazzi's happy. You do some decent unhealable damage to the range barracks, but honestly, Paparazzi, he's just farming. He has an eye of Scotty. Like, he is pretty damn farm. Once he gets his own butterfly, they don't have anything to really go through that except their magic damage, which we haven't seen much of. TNC, they're pinging the pit. I think they want to hold out for the Roche, but it's still got couple of minutes before it's even up here. Yep. Kind of feels like time's moving slow in that sense if you're for TNC, but you know, they are obviously not looking to overdive whatsoever at this point. Yeah, this is the problem. You you do have this void now going for the Agonins. Have a TA like TA, as you said, the Pinata, like this this hero is not good in the super late game. Like, yeah, sure, the mm. 30 like 40 minute mark, man, she is a monster because she has more items than everyone. That's how the hero works. But once you get past that point, this morph is the same slotted as her. You no longer have that giant advantage, even if your net worth is like 4k higher. Yeah, you'll definitely just like plateau out for a while, and Fichi have the late game stride to kind of move past that. It's a still big net worth advantage they have to kind of move past here, with, especially with a lot of their support staff, but TNC continue to encroach as much as possible onto Vici's turf so that they're forced inside and that the farming options are so extremely limited that only maybe Paparazzi is going to get little grabs of farm. He is farming, like, he's just going between bottom and top, and I like that the Earthshaker and the Axe are just, like, sitting behind him, like, yeah, Paparazzi, you just farm, whatever. Our games are over. You just go farm two lanes. We'll sit behind you. DP was able to finish out a BKB now, so a full 10-second BKB on this DP is pretty sweet. I, I'm really surprised. The Butterfly and TA, because usually we see something like the, the, the Hex, but I guess because they have Cuckoo already, but having another Hex, like, if you just instantly jump on the DP, but I guess with the AN disc plus the BKB, she's actually always going to get her ulti off now. And she has a decent amount of life because of that uh, level 20 talent. 500 HP is nothing to sneeze at. Oh, for sure. And they just continue to kind of pressure the lanes forward a bit and make sure that Vici are not comfortable moving too far on the outside. Have that trap down, and it looks like may respawn in 10 seconds time. It's a low, slow burn, but hey, look at Vici going on the move. They're going to catch Armel. Oh, Armel can't react in time. Gets caught with the call. Beautiful setup there from Yang, and that means Paparazzi is going to be looking to go for the follow-up. Nice Armel dumb. forced to step away, and a beautiful interception comes out from Ninja Boogie to stop them in their place, and that is more than enough to get it done. Man, that... Oh, well, there you see the butterfly instead of the hex avoided like 20 hits there. Ninja Boogie with the big four man stop. Yep, there's the TB. Like, thank you for uh, yeah. saving our <laughs> saving this game from spiraling out of control. It was appreciated. Definitely justified tip right oh, there. And it is a quick Roche. It'll be 30 seconds or 35 seconds. And that's good for TNC. They, they want to get this Roche as quick. As you said, they pinged it like five minutes ago. Like, yo, chill. Yeah, let's win. <laughs> it's got to be of any moment now, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, they're got Yang in the area to pick up the 40-minute bounty rune at the top, at least. But we'll have to see Vici Gaming's counter Roche lineup, how good it can be. I mean, if you want to commit a all with your, like, blink dunk and blink I, axe. Yeah. I think you just let him get it. I think you just, you you let him get the Roche and you just try yeah. to make him, right? Because they, they won against the Aegis last time. Like, you make them make the mistake, and I think that's okay. Like, 
def just defend in your base. It's, it's a lot smarter. Let the Roche go down. Yep, they're pinged out by Tim's now. And there, oh, there's the, the drawing. Uh, let's go. So you look to head that way. And honestly, I've been seeing Vici Gaming put together some really solid items. I would almost feel comfortable with their potential defense incoming, if, considering how well it went for them last time. I think TNC just need to have a, a new, unique approach if they want to catch Vici off guard. I agree. I think if... Axe need, if Axe gets a BKB, this Morph does get the Butterfly. Those are like the two big items. This Axe can jump in and just not instantly get blown up and like shackled by Cuckoo. They have a very good chance. I, I can't believe it's 23k and it, it does feel like, you know, Vici is, they're more than 10% in this game. Which For is sure. pretty rare to say at a 24k lead. I'm not sure where the Dota Plus rating had it at the moment, but... It's uh oh, it's not bad. pretty pretty still heavily favored for TNC. Eighty percent, that's not 80, bad. 70. At a, at a twenty-five k lead, eighty yeah. percent. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. twenty percent to win. We'll take it. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, they see multiple seed units infiltrating from the top. They'll take care of that. But still, corralled, shepherd, however you want to call it, stuck indoors on house arrest. Here, it's the options to go out and farm are a bit limited as long as TNC are floating around in the waters outside. Continuing to try to keep these lanes pressured forward. I mean, they're going to keep winning the economy game. I mean, they're farming more of the map, and all of them are getting a piece of the pie. But the problem is, like, your late game scalers. Yeah. Are, like, TAs pretty much can maybe get one or two more items if you sell your boots. Even, like, that's going to be empty net worth pretty soon on that hero. Like, nullifier on oh, Q, though, to... for uh, Faceless. Sorry, Armel, like, blinked on the DD and then just didn't take it. And then, like, Tim's, like, <laughs> pings it out. Like, I think he forgot to pick it up. There oh, that could be a big rune for them as they draw out a line to head south. You got, you got to give a new something. approach to this tier three. Yeah, this, I mean, this is this is a, this feels like this is a classic game three, right? Like both teams, yep. they just you don't want to overcommit because TNC already did it once. They saw the kill. Oh, he goes and barely that was misses. a risky play. He tried to jump in to get the brave call onto Gabby, but will get punished for it. It looks like with the jump in Chrono, they will get the finish. Axe does buy back, and he quickly times walks out to the other side. Ori unleashes his fury. Double ward's going to be committed here, and quickly Vici try to take care of those turrets from doing any serious base damage. TNC actually hesitating on trying to do any sort of follow-up move yet. Whoa. Longest Icarus dive I've ever seen from those back lines. Here comes the harassment from the outside. Kuku able to get that shackle to lock the brew in his spot, but there's obviously no follow-up hits yet. TNC very hesitant. And that running low on resources now. I'm seeing incredibly low man on here on Armel. You definitely could. I mean, you could wait out this Death Prophet ulti, like Panda ults down, Death Prophet ults down. You yep. could wait it out. The, Disc the is on is, cooldown for at least another minute, too. Yep, I am a little, I mean, I think every mid player is a little upset with Armel that he doesn't have a couple clarities in his backpack here, because that would be pretty damn nice to have. He has the Aegis, though, so a full new life, but for sure. The fact that you, you have to die to get mana. There he goes. We'll he see. wants to jump in, tries to get the hard shots onto Yang right away. Jump in, new Chrono setup, catches two. Gabby's able to move up and go directly for the big Earthshaker. He has the dunk, he buys back, and he's looking to commit it here, and now there it is. Jump in, grab, but Gabby just ah, gobbles down that cheese, and he's going to be A-OK. -okay. Leaps out the other side. TNC look to make the retreat. They already bought back, it looks like, on that Phoenix. And the chase is on from Vici here. Looking to get a grab onto Gabby. Did not catch him with that dust. They're just trying to all get out together. Looks like it will work. The thing is, your TNC, Vici. yeah, they they did not get another Rax. And guess what? That wasn't just Cheese and Aegis. That was a refresher shard as well. They they cannot kill one Rax with all three components That's crazy. of Roche. Two wards, two chronos, yep. all not enough to be able to finish off the Rax. That is concerning for TNC. I mean, I'm seeing their net worth continue to go up, but I'm seeing probabilities for Vici Gaming holding this game and pulling it back also go up little by little. Yeah, it is, because this Axe still no BKB. It was a buyback from Earthshaker and Axe, but you make Tim's buyback and you get Cuckoo, and buying back when you're this far ahead actually costs you so much more than when you're, like this Earthshaker, it costed him nothing to buy back. He has no items. Yeah. Understands that he might be able to get a Fisher off, probably lose his life and hope to bounce back with a decent dunk. A battle for the 45 minute runes here. It looks like both topple belong to Vichy. While TNC grabbed the other half of the map. And we're seeing it. The Death Prophet even almost has a, a sheep. Is in about 600 gold there. That's going to be great team fights in the middle. And the money soaring. on Morph is also huge. He's got nearly 8k in his bank account. So he doesn't look like he would. I mean, he would have got the Butterfly already if he wanted it. He's maybe saving for buyback and Butterfly, but 
I mean, you see like his it. items. He's pretty much slotty. Yep, there we go. Buys it out at the top, and well, this Morphling. I mean, even if they lose that bottom Rax now, they, what does that bottom Rax even mean? Like, who cares if you lose a ranged Rax? Like, you've shown you can defend. You probably have the better late game here with this Morphling and DP, and okay. just, you know, wait it out. All right. Wait for the next setup here. Fade under a Shadow Amulet. Oh, but they drop a Vision and a Sentry right on one side. They look to go for the focus Whoa. onto Armel. He forces him back with the Hurricane Pike. The Paparazzi is just swinging on in. Looking to go for Cuckoo. Cuckoo able to get off the Yules. Yang steps in, gets a nice two-man call, and they're going to get that finish on the oh Cuckoo. He does God. manage to drop the wards. Move it down from Fade. This is Peachy Gaming time. They're defending as much as they can, and they're going to finish on Ninja Boogie 2. Oh, disaster potentially here for TNC. They may have caught in Gabby. DY sets it up with the Cyclone. They wait for him to fall. The call's a little too early. A giant bubble going to get dropped. He traps everyone from inside. Side and him, Ar him and Armel begin to go to work. They clean out only one, though. They find Armel, too. And now it's Armel on the run. Tries to force himself into a different game, but it's Trap. not successful. Runs out the other side, and eventually they are going to swarm on in. Ninja Boogie, though, shows up. Tries to help out, and him and Gabby really can't offer a whole lot. It looks like they should be able to get the finish. Hey, well, they do get fade, I guess. Oh, my God. It's something, but this is proving to be m way too difficult for TNC. They cannot close this one out. Yep, and that was the paparazzi. By him go, like, he just BKB and win it. And the thing with him going in, the, the void, like, his level 25 talent's almost a hindrance to him right now. He has the plus 175 Chronosphere AoE. If he wanted to Chrono this uh, Morphling, he would have to Chrono three of his teammates. So by Paparazzi just jumping in on their yeah. team, like it makes Gabby useless. Like Paparazzi understands that. He's like, wait, I can use your own talents against you? Cool. Here, and we'll see a see, replay yeah. of the yeah, fight. When he just goes in right here, like, what does Gabby do? What are you going to do, Chrono He's three just of your watching. Teammates? He's back he up and he's anything. watching. He's just waiting. He's like, where can my Chrono go? Where can I commit it? And he doesn't. He can't do anything. Can't even right-click. Dude, I actually think the, the AoE town on this Void <laughs> might be a hindrance more than it is helpful this game. Yeah, very awkward approach for TNC, or rather just a fantastic defensive hold for Fiji Gaming to kind of assess that situation so well. And what was once a 22k net worth advantage cut dramatically. That was like a 4 or 5k net worth swinging fight. I mean, yeah, they mend a couple of kills there, taking out like the Death Prophet and some support, but, you know, without taking out Paparazzi, without taking out some serious base damage, like, I don't think it's good enough for TNC right now. Yep, do I feel like it. Morphling is gonna go for that Lincoln. Just definitely doesn't want to get caught out by Cuckoo. Like that's the only way you die. You get a hex before BKB. That's the only way you're dying. You hit the Lincolns. If he jumps in hexes, you're gonna be able to pop BKB before he shackles or vice versa. However they want to do it. Oh, Gabby tried to jump in here. Couldn't make it across the trees, unfortunately. Yep, and you see the plus three multi-shot adaptive strikes. When you this farm with the butterfly and all that, that shit will hurt multiple people. That's what multi means. You're welcome. All right. Well, Fichi, feel comfortable enough to kind of step outside the front door a bit. It's first. They have, they have been know. in this base for about 10 to 15 minutes now, and they finally, like, just getting the, that's what you win the team fight. Getting these lanes pushed out, it allows you to actually finally farm. And there's the Shivas, finally for the DP. And it, you finally get that. The minus attack speed's very good this game. You usually don't think about it. You're like, oh, it's the armor and all that, but this minus attack speed. I also like the utility here. Look at DY's inventory for the first time in a while. He's got that solar crest and a value buckler on the side. He's not nearly as easy to get bursted down from the TA himself, and he can actually use that solar crest to have Faceless Void or TA in kind of a bit of trouble on trying to get the right click through. Yeah, but I know Kyle is frothing how happy he is for this casual buckler. I know him and Z Freak, the brothers, they like they were the like the original casual bucklers. Like this is the game winning item. I'm like, doesn't it cost like six hundred gold? It doesn't matter. That's all it costed, and I guess most teams should learn about it sooner. Are uh, you with think? But here we go. They're smoking up. Uh, Roche will respawn at five. Ooh. So Dire obviously knows because the traps. Yeah. But okay. It's popping up right smoke, now. Smoke move in. Tim's is just on the other side. Could pop the smoke and does, but he Ooh. got the cooks the AOE. The call gets the grab. Tim's is on the other side. It looks like it. the scouting pigeon may be finished off. That's a pretty oh. decent ward on the high ground, and the chrono may lock him oh in his my. spot. Nicely done from Gabby, and that is going to secure the takedown of Paparazzi. Wonderful bait in setup. They're going to get everyone now. Yep. Well, at least all of them. And that's, guess what? Sometimes maybe sitting inside your base is a little bit better than going out. And, <laughs> well, they bring down the panda as well. And that is, there you go. See, when, when he's by himself, that, that's like perfect timing, right? Morph is by himself on the egg. You just easy to chrono that. Great positioning for Tim's on that, that Phoenix to be able to spot that smoke movement. And because he was able to get the egg to the high ground, it's just made it way too awkward. And 
and uh, Gabby just at the right place at the right time. Buyback has to be forced out from DY, but as we know, still needs another minute before his primal spits uh, even going to be up at the ready. Man, I thought that was that was just a good bait in by Tim's right there, and it, it was a good call because he had the plus AOE. It looked like, hey, they're going to get this Phoenix, but they still didn't know where he was because he was so deep in the trees they mm. couldn't even see where the attacks were coming from. All right, we got Aegis on TA. We got the cheese for the Faceless Void. He's also going to hold the Refresher Shard, so for double big bubble action. Go in with that. I think you might. He might just go in and hope for the best. That AOE is so big inside the base. You might just but you, you Shadow miss Blade fade. Might try to go for a jump on the outside with the dunk. Move in calls there. Jump in Chrono catches a couple, but not everyone. Looks like he puts he his focus right away for Dy. Profit walks right into the bubble. Looks to go for the finish, and Armel gets blasted down. And Gabby's what? in trouble next. Gabby what? also gone. Oh, disaster for what? TNC. Here comes trouble now. Fighting confidently on four. This is the yeah. second life of Armel. He's going to die before the Faceless Void can even return to the fight. But no, he tries to turn around and swing it out. Still in trouble, though. The chase is on. And there he eventually gets finished. Buyback from him. They're trying to close this thing out. It would look like G Gabby's getting Paparazzi back in on the action. Though. He's got the cheese in the bubble still. Dives on in. Gets a nice. big bubble grab. Looks to go for it. Jump on the other side. Big dunks there. But can they get the finish here? The Morph's going to be out for good two minutes. No buyback back. onto him. This might be it. TNC looking to close things out on this one, trying to prevent Vici Gaming from making it back inside to safely be able to defend. They get Yang down. That is as well a dive back, and it's looking good for TNC And now. Ori should oh, be next here. TNC, yes. it was a long, tough, uphill battle, but it is going to be successful. Pause Whoa. or not, this one is over. GG's have been tossed. Respect has been given, and this one is done. It's TNC who are going to be able to move on to the next round. Good God. Good for that. That's a top six. That is, you don't realize how big the jump in points from the one below there to just being top six. That, that is a huge win. Moving to the arena, that was th this void, like such good chronos in the beginning, and then like a couple suspect ones, and then I loved it. He it was a pretty bad one, right? And then he died, but he bought back. He already used a refresher shirt, so he ran Mickin and gets a huge one on Paparazzi. All you have to do is hit Paparazzi. Once he's down, all their damage is down. And he does it. Fiji were doing so great at holding the line, defending. I mean, you're yeah. talking they defended two racks against two bubbles, yeah. two sets of wards, and they were just unstoppable. But the one second they step outside the base, they go for a smoke movement. It's the Phoenix to spot them <laughs> out, and then they just crumble apart. They get the Roche, they get the Aegis, and obviously it turns to that. Great calls for the buybacks there at the end to kind yes, of put the nail in the coffin, and that's all TNC needed. Yep, and once again, I talk about the, the late game supports. You have a Phoenix and an Elder Titan. You have that aura is always going to be good. Phoenix, yep. as I've said, is like the best late game support. And you're going up against this Urshiger who wasn't farmed in a Brewmaster at position five with no items. Isn't that impactful? So TNC really, really loves those late game supports. Congratulations to them. They will move on and, like you said, be able to play at the arena. And for Vici Gaming, well, it's been a valiant run and they must bow out. Let's throw things over to the panel to get their assessment on this series. Thank you very much, guys. Indeed, it went from 450 points to 900 DPC points for TNC. They doubled it with this victory here over Vici Gaming. It wasn't flawless, though. It was a rough battle for them. We know from their group stage matches that going high ground has been a problem, and the problems seem to reoccur here a little bit again in uh, the third game. Here to discuss that third game, we got Black Bulldog and Gods, and you know TNC making a top six is congratulations to them, but they got they got a lot to think about also for this next coming day and a half they got. Yeah, it's a I mean, tough team to go high ground against, mm -hmm. but they definitely made it harder on themselves than it needed to be mm -hmm. with some of the ways they played around Aegis, Cheese, Refresher, Serpent Wards. But they were the better team. Uh, yes. Better team won. Better analysts got the prediction right. You know, it's, yeah. it's how this goes. Mike, what do you got to say about that? You picked VG. Didn't look that close, honestly. I mean, what can I say? VG. You thought that DP would have a chance against TA? What about that? I'm pretty sure TA I'm against sure. TA. Do you uh, know DP that he got five five. So what? It's bad now. No, it's not. It is pretty bad now. No. They nerfed the armor as well on it. It's all right. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> was it all right? I mean, he definitely didn't show it was all right. Oh, but yeah. the lane is definitely a 5-5 But it's five Ori. Lane. Ori is super good. If he, if he can do it, what do you That's think? True. He's bad or what? I mean, in his Necro game, he wasn't very good either. His Ember game, though. Yeah, his Ember game. Well, I don't know. We can't doubt Ori, I think. I think uh, for this game, Vici Gaming, they had to rely a lot on uh, 
on Yang also to keep up. He was he was the only one doing well in the lanes. I felt it's like two games in a row where he crushes his lane and then I don't know he he gets some okay calls up, but there's not the best follow up and. Mm. Just doesn't feel like this core axe is as good as the support axe, maybe. I mean, crushing the lane is like, you know, he didn't do anything. He just cutting creep waves, and then he gets yeah. like these two items, and then suddenly he's a non-factor. Mm -hmm. He misses so many calls, a lot of misplays. Mm -hmm. uh, it, look, it looked really rough but for it's, them. It's hard mm -hmm. to find. We just saw like the Phoenix egg, and they like you get baited to hit, and then the the void all comes. Like it's super hard to fight this. But I, I feel like yep. TNC could have ended this so much earlier. Just. Use the wards with Rasta. Like, it shouldn't be this hard to just put Rasta wards down and just jump in with Void Ult. I mean, he also had the wrong talent. Yeah. There were the wrong talents and some wrong item pickups, I feel like. A lot uh, of wrong items. Wrong talent on the yeah. Shaman, the items on the Butterfly and the TA seemed a bit weird. The Void going for, like, second item Silver Edge seemed very odd. I had, like, no damage, and he goes for an Ag Scepter, which I think Ags is fine, but um, it just felt like he wasted money on that Silver Edge. Yeah. But. Hey, TNC get the win. They're through. They Top six. I mean, yeah. did they win? But it feels like you it know, feels like both teams lost ah, here. Yeah. If, if they play like a secret so. or LGD, ah, it it's, I mean, they're not. They're not maybe as good as secret or LGD. They're not going to get first or second at this tournament. But they, I but they, they can want go further. to. Like yeah. they, they can't be maybe, too happy with their performance. I mean, maybe they keep improving and they will get there. Yeah. I mean, this is way better than the group stage. They, you know, showed some slight signs of instability pushing high ground and some item decisions yeah. that were wrong mm -hmm. but they still got the win and didn't completely throw the game and the first True. two <laughs> games were like i felt the first two games they played pretty well honestly like even though they lost the first game they played fairly well this game of course was a little bit like iffy yeah. on the high ground but so I, I feel pretty confident in them i feel like I, they, they can go like top four easily yeah i think they're a team that will be at least 50 50 against an IP, maybe even slightly favored because of the stand in factor. Like, I, I it's not sure it's an IP, look at <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, everyone's That's taking true. for granted. <laughs> Everybody's saying, uh, of course, but, uh, the NIP will face If they get BP, then I think TNC's in trouble. But yeah. you know, we'll mm -hmm. see. If somehow uh, PPD pulls off another big upset, which is possible, absolutely possible. Yeah. For now, though, VG Gaming uh, take their exit. I think a lot of people had big expectations of them coming into this tournament, but. I mean, it's the start of the season. They were just not ready for going further than this. And top eight is still oh, not a bad showing for the way they played, I feel. I mean, VG can't be too happy after changing their logo just recently. <laughs> going from silver to gold did not bring them the first place as intended. Yeah, didn't work out. But, uh, you know, the Chinese people, they still have LGD, who's looking... I'm, I feel I'm almost better than a secret, mm -hmm. personally, but we're going to see that tomorrow, I guess. Nope. Yeah, nope. Tomorrow is the day off. All right. So in like a week or so, we're going to finally <laughs> see it. <laughs> Move to the arena. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yep. We are. Yeah, we were actually going to have um, the NIP uh, VP match first and then the lower bracket straight after because the teams prefer to play two in a row rather than having a series break. So that will be also uh, fun to watch. Um, we also have, of course, uh, for this series, an MVP, and um, it is it is Cuckoo. I mean, that Earthshaker in that second game especially, you can't match that. No. Man of the match. Yeah, for sure. See the Necker stats here. Didn't have the best Necker game, but I think the team as a whole um, didn't play perfect game one. Mm -hmm. But uh, he stepped it up. His Shaker uh, he made the big game-winning plays game two. I, mean, I, I, don't, I just don't know about Necro. The hero just seems really... Like weird. Everybody plays the same yeah. way. I'm really tanky. Oh, I die. Everyone knows what it does now. It's like yeah. okay. It's but, uh, his, his shaker was really clutch, especially I think a lot of like bait initiations. Like he jumps in and then he yules himself, and buys a lot of time for his team to get the spells off. You know, game three. I think he had a huge misplay with the talent, but other than that, he played fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing yeah. more to add. Nothing more to add. And here's a clip of his player perspective as our shaker. I wonder if he sees that. Yeah, he did yeah, he see saw them. Them. That was see such them. a good play because he just ignores the axe. Like the yeah. axe is the first three sees. So many like players will just rush it and throw a stun or mm -hmm. panic because this axe popped out, but he waits and just blinks past the axe. Yeah. Very, very clutch play. Game winning play right there. And the fear coming out way too late there as well. Yeah. The whole team backing off, but that yeah, was a it was a good series for them. Um yeah, they they are the better team here in this series for sure. They deserve that win, and uh, they do have some things to work on. But hey, if you manage to pull through, they're a really good team. Like individual mm -hmm. talent wise, I think um, Gabby was one of the top carry players in SEA who wasn't playing on like a tier one team last season. Armel 
um, is like a more stable upgrade to what Cuckoo used to be as a mid laner for them. And uh, I think Cuckoo's looking better on the three position because he's, he's a greedy playmaker. When he was playing support, there were some games he farmed too much, played too greedy, um, and wasn't looking out for the team. But as a three position, you can do that more. So BG, I, li I like though, him. A lot of things to think about. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like from top two at Hamburg to like top eight major, definitely know what they wanted. That's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's going to be also uh, very interesting to see how TNC themselves do in front of a crowd. And uh, I hope to also get some words from Ninja Boogie about that because uh, I can only imagine that will be a big change for you guys as a squad to play in front of the home crowd. Hey, Ninja Boogie, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, it's going to be fun. You know, I always love playing in front of a crowd. You've got some very young players uh, in your squad. Do you think it will it will positively impact their their play? Because I can, you know, are they uh, are they okay with the nerves? I mean, one way or another, it's going to be a positive outlook. You know, they're going to learn from it and grow from it. So yeah, it's going to be good. Over the last week, uh, speaking of learning and growing, you guys have done that a lot. Um, it started off rocky against against VG Gaming, and now you obviously you beat them. Can you tell me a little bit about how you tried to to fix some of the the, the going high ground issues uh, that you had in the start of this tournament? Uh, I think I just told them like we have to be more patient and more clear. You know, like uh, a lot of times we're very rushed, especially when we know uh, the game is in our hands, and that makes us uh, makes the wrong um, makes us make the wrong decisions in game. So yeah, we just try to slow down, you know, calm ourselves down, and then try to talk properly well, there's some nerves game three when thing, some of the high ground pushes didn't go so <laughs> smoothly yeah at, at one point i told cuckoo you know you, you gotta stop just like diving in you know? <laughs> we, we need you alive we don't need the words <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah you know um mm -hmm. as far as the the main stage goes you guys will verse either nip or vp how how do you like approach playing at the first day on the main stage when you don't even know your opponent like uh. do you how do you prepare because it could be any either team well, for me, my preparation throughout all the, t um, the tournament was more just focusing on ourselves because I think we're a pretty strong team. It's just we need to fix our problems. So I'm confident no matter who we face, we can put a good fight. And I'll just do some analysis, work with Kips and strategy, uh, you know, make a strategy up along the way. Hey, you guys don't have a coach, right? No. Are you looking to pick someone up in the future? with? Or uh, see how it goes, you know, like I said before, like um, we're still in the learning how to be a team and I think having an extra mind will just complicate things up. So, I mean, once we're stable and we feel the need, I think we, we're, we could get a coach. Okay. And right now there's uh, a lot of people watching from Twitch chat and I think they want to know what your favorite Twitch emote is. <laughs> uh, I don't really watch Twitch. You don't have a so favorite emote? Uh, Dance game. <laughs> yeah. You don't watch Bulldog stream? No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I lo I'm loving it, Ninja Boogie. Thanks for your honesty. <laughs> and I don't blame you. I'm going to let you get back to your team. Uh, you guys got uh, well, a day and a half to prepare. I'm looking forward to seeing you playing in the main stage in front of uh, what I would imagine is a crowd that is definitely in your favor. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you. And of course, uh, that was uh, Ninja Boogie, who makes it forward with TNC. We could take a look at the brackets and see where that leaves us, because that it means that they are one of the six teams making it to the Axiata Arena. And um, there's one more team needing to join them. It's going to be either Fnatic or Evil Geniuses. That's going to be the next uh, matchup. And of course, we also have the upper bracket semifinals coming in two days. Should be, should be some good games, guys. Nice. Some great games, actually. Secret as it is, probably what a lot of people think would be the final. I don't know. We always hype these series up, and then they end up being <laughs> not that exciting. Well, that's yeah. true. Uh, I feel like there's going to be some series you don't expect that's going to be crazy. I don't know, like some EG fanatic coming like, up next. Like you know? J Storm fanatic. Yeah. <laughs> like yesterday, yeah. I don't know. Maybe, maybe like NIPVP. That could just suddenly be a crazy series because PPD has got mm -hmm. some crazy drafts prepared. Yeah. yeah. Some new players yeah. in his team as well. Mm -hmm. Mind so. control. Mm hmm. Yeah. yeah. Any uh, any closing thoughts here on uh, VG Gaming and TNC? I see Dota. They're they're fighting their way through the little bracket. Yep. They're gonna keep doing it. Mm. Knock out NA's last hope, and yeah, that's it. Yeah, and I feel like they honestly played pretty well today. So I, I think they got a pretty good chance of going pretty far in this tournament. Say some words for VG Gaming, Black. <laughs> Rip. <laughs> oh, <laughs> come on! It's not that bad. They still came no, to play. It's just, you know, not at all what they expected to happen. They went from, like, second place in a pretty big tournament to top eight. It's yeah. Like, like, it's not that far ago, like, that long ago that 
and w when was Hamburg? Two like, weeks ago. Two weeks ago. It's like, what happened? Like, why are they, you know, why didn't they? Tougher competition, more better? pressure. You're playing a major. Yeah, yeah, a lot, it's very different turn. Mm -hmm. It is. It just, it just didn't meta look changes. like. Like the, the meta changes, even without new patches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but VG mm -hmm. definitely didn't look as convincing as it did in Hamburg. They also, I mean, game two draft was like life steal. Like game three is death prop. They're picking heroes that yeah. aren't great. RTK, definitely going to go back to the drawing board there. Yeah. Well, 720 coming out. Maybe it's the next meta coming up already. <laughs> well, well yeah. before that, we still have to crown a champion here in Kuala Lumpur. And that for that, we need to get some more eliminations going. And the next elimination match is going to be Evil Geniuses taking on Fnatic. Very exciting match. Go get your grab yourself a snack and a drink and get ready here for a Red Eye and his panel to take you through that match. Coming up next... Fanatic.